It is now 10.15, time for member statements, and I recognize the member from Mississauga Malton. Thank you. More than 20 million brilliant LEDs in a captivating outdoor walking journey on a 600,000 square feet site. Madam Speaker, this is not a dream. It's actually a reality in my riding of Mississauga Malton with 14 magical universes at Illumi, a dazzling world of lights, an immersive extraordinary light show first of its kind in Ontario, and one of the largest sound and multimedia show in the world where families can come together and marvel at the imaginative power lights can bring. Founded by Norma Lateral, one of the founders and artistic directors of Cirque du Soleil, in the first four weeks, Illumi attracted over 150,000 attendees, created 200 plus jobs in the community, bringing a common theme for parents, children, families, and the broader community to enjoy the theme of imagination, enabling community members to develop their passion and imagination. My heartfelt thankful to the staff and management for making these visits memorable. Illumini has made commitment to stay for a long time and will bring an opportunity to help other small businesses by giving them an outlet to outreach to the local community, to taste the experience of fun at Illumi. And for further details, please visit www.illumi.com and get dazzled. Colleagues, simply put, Let's go to Illumi and build memories. Thank you, Madam Chair. Other statements? I recognize the member for Mushkegoic, James Bay. Merci, Madam President. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The housing crisis is inevitable. In my riding, agencies for low-income housings have three and a half year wait lists. We have a low-income rental that are abandoned and deemed unfit because agencies have no fund to, for repair. Our private rental companies, landlords, have hundreds of names on their wait list. We have refugees and immigrants who want to start a life in our small communities but have no place for them to live. Inflation is so high that people cannot afford their rent and are looking for subsidized housing. They are left choosing between food and rent. Our population is aging and the seniors have nowhere to go as LTD, LTC homes and full, are full and book solid for years to come. Business cannot attract new workers as they have no accommodation to offer them. Long-term care homes and hospitals cannot attract retained doctors and nurses as they have no accommodations for them. People with special needs who, have, or who are seeking group homes are either waiting for years for a spot or are being sent hundreds of kilometers away for a place to live, living there complete, uh, completely alone apart from their families. The list goes on and on. It's only the beginning. Premier, the need to remedy this issue is now. Invest, investment needs to happen now so that people and families of Mishkegwak, James Bay, won't end, won't end up on the streets. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to pay tribute to Deborah Foster. Many of you may have recalled her in this legislature. She did appear before us at the Finance Committee, where she advocated for so many small businesses through Barrie and Simcoe County. She touched the lives of so many people. She was passionate for life. She lifted up those around her. She helped folks like Sarah Taylor, who uh, she acted as a mentor for, and so many small businesses. She had a passion for cooking and a zeal for life, and let's not forget, her passion for airplanes. And many years ago, she opened up a business called Office Inc. And through that business, she was able to help so many others that we know around our communities, like Jay Sticky Buns, who operated out of a kitchen called the Yum Kitchen, um, who now have their own location in the community, and they're sold out every day. Through Yum Kitchen, she helped young and all-age all entrepreneurs really be able to export their love of cooking throughout their community. She was a true entrepreneur speaker, and in fact, she received the Arch Brown Entrepreneurial Award back in 2011, and of the Excellence Award from the Barrie Chambers of Commerce and the City of Barrie. She was unstoppable, and she will be missed in our community. But when we reflect upon all the businesses and all the entrepreneurs she lifted up, 
we can take comfort in the memories of all the lives she touched. I want to pay my condolences to their family, uh, to the family of Deborah Foster. You will be missed in our community. Thank you. Member statements. The member for St. Catharines. It gives me great pleasure to recognize a Canadian veteran-owned and operated small business today. One week ago, I had the sincere privilege to tour Arrowhead Coffee Company in St. Catharines. It was a tremendous honour to visit this small business that has a simple goal – to create a supportive community determined to help veterans and first responders thrive. Giving back to veteran charities aligned with their goals while also roasting some great coffee. Arrowhead goes out of their way to employ veterans. They offer routine and a support system for returning service men and women. They give back whenever and wherever. Everything they roast and produce happens right in St. Catharines. It is an Ontario product created by an Ontario company that employs Ontarian veterans. Lane Valley, a former Canadian Force member, bought the company two years ago. I want to recognize how his company is giving back to the community through their hiring and charitable efforts. What has always been clear to me in this House and in this chamber is that we all share, no matter our political stripes, a tremendous dignity and respect for the sacrifices of our veterans. This is why I am honoured to recognize the Arrowhead Coffee Company here today, a small business in St. Catharines that supports veterans in a very big way. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very happy to rise today to acknowledge the recent municipal election. As many of you know, there are 18 lower-tier municipalities in my riding of Hastings, Lennox and Addington. And of course, once again, the municipal clerks, acting as the returning officers for these elections, have done an outstanding job and ensuring that the elections operated with tremendous professionalism. I would like, Mr. Speaker, to publicly thank them for their role in this vital democratic institution. As everyone in this House knows, elections are a challenging time and can be very difficult, especially in these days of social media attacks. I would like to show my appreciation for all those who stepped forward, offered their ideas, their time and their dedication to support their communities. This election saw the return of, of many mayors in my ridings, including Paul Jenkins of Bancroft, Tom DeLine of Centre Hastings, Dennis Purcell of Faraday, Lloyd Blackburn of Maydock Township, Jan O'Neill of Marmaron Lake, Bob Mullen of Sterling Rodden, and Neil Allison Belleville, and Henry Hogg in Addington Highlands. It also brought us some new heads of council, with Randy Wallace and Carlo Mayo, Tony Fitzgerald in Hastings Highlands, Kim Carson of Limerick, Dave Hederson of Tudor Cashel, Don DeGenova of Tweed, Claire Kennelly of Tyndanaga, Michael Firth of Wollaston, Terry Richardson in Napanee, John Wise in Stone Mills, and in Loyalist Township, my former deputy mayor is now Mayor Jim Hagedorn. For those who are new to the positions, I welcome them to, th them to their new governance roles. And for those who are returning, I thank you for continuing to show your dedication to your community and to your neighbours. As these new councils begin to gather to learn the procedures and gain a fuller understanding of how their municipalities work, I look forward to working with them as partners to improve the permitting and planning processes to ensure that we can all work together to build the homes in the communities across the province. It takes all levels of government to do something that we've never done before. Bill adding 1.5 million homes in this province. It's vitally necessary, and we will get it done, making sure that the dream of home ownership is viable for the next generation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, the member for Davenport. Thank you, Speaker. Over the past 
past month, I've been visiting communities across the province to support our local champions who are running in municipal elections, from North Bay to Nepean, from Fort Erie to Sault Ste. Marie. I had some great conversations with people about what they care about, and let me tell you, Speaker, one thing I'm hearing very clearly from everyone is concern about the state of our health care system. Hallway medicine is commonplace again, as are 12 to 20-hour wait times to see a doctor in emergency. People are worried that this government's plans to sell off more of our health care system to for-profit companies looking to make a buck will be paid for by their loved ones or themselves. People are worried that the government's disrespect for nurses and other health care workers is creating a massive staffing crisis. Chesley Hospital emergency room is closing till December. December. Why? Because of a critical nursing shortage. Speaker, every single dollar moved out of public health care into the pockets of corporations is a dollar less for working people, for local hospitals, and for strained emergency rooms. It's time for this government to reverse course on its sell-off of public health care, to respect and properly compensate the people that provide that care, and to ensure that local care is there when people need it. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Thank you, Speaker. <laughs> Members, this morning it is my pleasure to tell you about an event I attended last Sunday in Owen Sound, put on by the Billy Bishop Museum, honoring local veterans in our community. As you know, Billy Bishop was a flying ace in the First World War. He was the top Canadian and British Empire ace of the war and received the Victoria Cross. Billy Bishop was born in Owen Sound, and his birthplace is now a national historic site and museum and a popular local destination. On October 23rd, the Billy Bishop Museum held its annual veteran ceremony at the Royal Canadian Legion Branch 6 in Owen Sound, complete with colour guard and bagpipes. It was a great show. The eight local veterans honoured were Able Seaman Audrey Chester Coltus, leading aircraftman Elwood Moore, Private Harry George Tucker, James Jim Cohen, Aircraft Woman Joan Mavis Cracknell, Master Warrant Officer Kenneth Surridge, Chief Warrant Officer Lawrence Victor James Surridge, and Master Warrant Officer Wayne Kenny. It was a beautiful, meaningful, moving ceremony offering these eight veterans, which clearly told the story of their commitment and sacrifice to our country and to our community. Thank you all involved in putting on this excellent event, and of course, thank you to our eight extraordinary Grey Bruce veterans. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Guelph. Good morning, Speaker. It's an honour to rise today and give voice to the countless number of my constituents on social assistance who are reaching out to me to share just how desperate it is to live in legislated poverty. I want to remind the members opposite that somebody on Ontario Works survives on $731 a month. Somebody on Ontario Disability Support is forced to live on $1,200 a month. I can't tell you how many of my constituents have reached out to say that even if they can find a place to live, trying to pay rent on such low amounts of money is becoming increasingly impossible. To put food on the table when inflation is more than 11 per cent is impossible. Tragically, tragically, Speaker, I have constituents reaching out who are considering medical assistance and dying because their state of desperation is so great. I believe Ontario is better than this. I know we're better than this. And, Speaker, I know that money doesn't grow on trees but we can afford to double social assistance rates in this province to end legislative poverty. We know that poverty costs this province $33 billion a year in additional health care costs and lost productivity. So let's spend the money up front to help people leave, live lives of dignity. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Oakville. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. And, uh, founded in 1910, the Royal Canadian Navy has played an important role in the security of our nation. The Royal Canadian Navy has a long tradition of giving Canadian ships names with Canadian connections. 
During the Second World War, one of those ships, a Canadian-built flower-class Corvette, was named after the town of Oakville. On November 5, 1941, HMCS Oakville was one of the few Canadian warships to be christened in their namesake town, and the ceremony was one of the largest, if not the largest, ceremonies in, of a warship in Canada. Thousands of people converged on the town of Oakville to see the Corvette-class ship. The mayor adopted the crew and the ship as honorary citizens and stated proudly that the town would never forget the ship. HMCS Oakville served during the Battle of the Atlantic, the longest continuous battle of the Second World War. On the evening of August 27, 1942, HMCS Oakville was engaged and sank the German U-boat U-94 during an escort mission off the coast of Cuba. When only a few decades after the war, memory of the town's famous warship was forgotten. In fact, if not for, for the efforts of Lieutenant Sean Livingston, a local reservist, author, and naval historian, the story of HMCS Oakville would have certainly been lost. On November 5th of this year, the Oakville Museum will celebrate the history of the warship in an exhibition at the Queen Elizabeth Community and Cultural Centre. The displays aptly named Oakville's Flower will feature artifacts, displays, historical accounts, and photographs at the HMCS Oakville. As we approach Remembrance Day, I encourage everyone to learn more about the history of our ship and remember all the great veterans from the Second World War. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Member statements. Member for Ajax. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to say it's an honour to represent my, the people of Ajax, and I'm looking forward to accomplishing much together. Over the break, I had the privilege of attending Pumpkinville put on by the town of Ajax and TD. The town continues to grow and build a strong community. It was hosted at the picturesque Greenwood Conservation Area for a variety of activities, including live shows from the great Canadian lumberjacks, friendly fables, and Jessica's towering performance of Disney hits. In addition to the live stage, there was also children's games and activities, interactive experiences, community displays, and exhibitors a sensory zone, a wonderful haunted house, and Steve and Amanda's No Frill provided pumpkins to all who attended. Pumpkinville events was tailored for families and children, but saw more than 12,000 people of all ages come out. During these times of economic uncertainty, the event was free. These events offer more, offers more entertainment to our community as a chance to socialize and break out of the norms, which has a huge benefit for our mental health. Community events like these are some of the main reasons the Ajax community is so strong. Under the Premier's leadership, we hope this government will continue to encourage and find opportunities to support events that are playing an integral role in the recovery of our communities. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our member's statements for this morning.